Bruce. Um, as long as we're ten, I mean six feet apart, I'm okay with people masks so we can hear each other. Especially since it's being uh, uh, zoomed out, or uh, people can zoom in. We're at the City Hall, City Hall Council Chambers, 10 West State Street. Today's date is August 24, 2020. The time is 5.30 p.m. And uh, you're able to join by computer, tablet, or smartphone as published uh, in advance, or you can call in with the published numbers. Notice to the public, the Mayor and Council welcome comment from the public during the discussion of any of the items on the agenda. You're required to step to the mic, state your name and address for the record, limit the time to uh, three, three minutes or less so others may be given the opportunity to speak. If you speak, speak clearly, direct your comments to the Mayor and Council and not to any Councilor specifically. It's to the discretion of the Mayor and the Council to respond to specific, to specific questions and comments or to have staff respond during the meeting. Now that we've been called to, the, to order, for those who are able and present, uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Let's do the roll call, please. Cahill? Here. Gowdy? Here. Hoop? Here. Isom? Here. Martin? Here. Thompson? Here. Warren? Here. Very good, thank you. Are we doing years of service to start with? We do uh, not have any here tonight. No, nobody present? Okay, we'll defer that then. Uh, do any of the uh, counselors have any comments to make tonight? Seeing Your nobody. Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Your Honor, I'm sorry. I just want to thank our city city staff and our um, first responders for their work after the derecho on August 10th. It is a little deja vu from the tornado, and so I know we have experienced people doing it, but nonetheless, it is a um, a time that brings out hopefully the best in people, and we've seen a lot of good things come forth from our staff as well as from our neighbors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, very well said. Any other comments up here? Your Honor. Yes, sir. In lieu of the significant tree damage and the waste that's being carted away and still to be cut, I would like to suggest to the council that we have some modification in the open burning law on the order of uh, by quadrant by section prior to October 1st October 1st is the official and legal burning time um, I'm informed by assistant chief that any changes in that hard and fast October 1st must be uh, approved initiated if you will by the council I think uh, that could be an order. I know there's green wood, um, but there's a lot of, of dead limbs and so on. Um, so I would I would ask the other council members to at least consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Any from the city minister? Um, then, Your Honor. Okay, I've got a couple things actually. I had mentioned that in the. Uh, I know only two people read it, but the. Marston Mayor's Facebook page uh, said uh, keep tuned because I know there has been discussion about uh, the, the burning, so that is likely to be under consideration here shortly. Um, right now with the forecast as it is and as dry as it has been, uh, we're probably going to have to wait until the weather gets better to uh, be able to do that. And other people responded to, to I guess, m maybe more than two read it. Uh, there has have been a response that as dry as it's been lately and with so many things piled up along the uh, curbs right now, we could just really set the whole town on fire if we weren't careful. So I know that the fire chief is taking his uh, uh, orders from the uh, um, state fire marshal's office and our fire marshal, and uh, we will keep track of the weather and, to, and see also how things are going on the relief. 
And then I'd like also to comment, I, I echo what uh, Ms. Cahill said about the uh, staff. I, I was interviewed today over the noon hour at KFJB and I've been, been interviewed about 10, 12 times since the derecho. And at each opportunity I've told people just how well the city staff has responded to this, starting at the very top and with the top level people. I'm giving a tour to the mayor the day after or the second day after the tornado and uh, there is Jeff, our park and rec person, with the spray paint and his, his uh, camera taking, phone taking pictures of the trees that have the dangerous objects, the window makers, I guess they're called, uh, that had to come down. So I stopped the car and asked her to get out. Well, she, she got out on her own to meet him and see just how how hard our staff are working. I know he's not in the room right now because he's downstairs helping count the number of people that come in tonight to the meeting, but uh, that was a good example for the governor to see just how um, our, well our city staff respond to things like this. Uh, so uh, I was pleased about that. The other thing I'd like to talk about is Jay Corello. He uh, passed away over this last weekend. He ran for council uh, recently. He's been very involved in different things in the city. After Dorothy Apgar, he kind of became the de facto historian for the city of Marshalltown. He's been wonderful for the uh, uh, cemetery uh, where, where he's helped and kept track of some of the, the uh, people that have lived out there. And he's been my go-to person if I needed something uh, about anything Marshalltown history. So. Um, I'd like to, f f for all of what Jay has done for the city, I'd like to uh, just take a moment of silence for about 30 seconds to uh, think about Jay and what he's done. Thank you. I was pleased to read by somebody who posted that he was he had family with him and he was not in pain when he when he passed away and that does help those of us who uh, survive and who know Jay. Uh, we're at that point in the agenda maybe to call for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I understand there's one thing to be removed from it first. Uh, I have already forgotten what no it, it dealt with uh, uh, one of the people applying for permit, as I recall, but somebody will have to help me figure out which number it's in to remove that from the Your consent Honor. agenda. Oh, yes, yes sir. Your Honor, that would be the tree trimmer license for Martin's Tree Service. We will be removing that from the consent agenda. And I'm sorry, I, I heard it was a tree trimmer license, but which which number is it for? Number, number four. four. Okay, thank you. Couldn't hear that. There we go. Okay, with Your Honor. Yes. I would like to remove items 7 and 13 from the consent agenda, please. Your Honor, I move for approval with those changes. Second. So, okay. That's uh, been moved and seconded with those changes. Uh, roll call. Before we call roll, Your Honor. Yes, sir. I, with your permission, I just want to make a couple comments about two of the items. I just want to bring a couple things to the public's attention so they don't get lost since they're in the consent agenda. Is that okay, Your Honor? Uh, I think so. Okay. Number nine is waiving setback requirements for construction. Uh, several people with older homes lost houses or garages that were before the ordinance was changed and the setback was set back further from the, the front of the property line. We're not forcing them to put new foundations in, new garages in. We're allowing them to build on the foundation that still exists. I think the public needs to understand that. I don't want that to get lost. And then also um, number 10 is waiving the demolition permit fees um, that was the same plan that was put in place, correct, Michelle, after the tornado? And that will go on for six months, give people six months to take down, they'll still have to, you know, do the job properly and file any asbestos, correct? But I just want to make sure those two things didn't get lost in the consent agenda that people understand that uh, we're out there to help them, not to, uh, not to hinder their recovery from this. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Roll call. 
Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Technical difficulties. We're trying to get everybody hooked up again today. Thank you for your access. My last experience today with the Zoom calls was uh, there were 15 people on the uh, American College of Trial Lawyers Iowa Division branch. For some reason, uh, they could see me but couldn't hear me, which everybody got a big kick out of. Um, but th it only works so so well. And as I understand it, we're doing something other than Zoom here tonight. It's fixed. It's fixed. Okay, we're back to good, uh, and we. Now I've lost track of whether we actually did the roll and we're ready for the next thing or not. We did. Thank you. Okay. On to motions, reports, and skip those. Uh, she needs to read them. Oh, you do need to read them. Yeah, gee whiz. We got a new clerk but an old uh, mayor. You'd think I'd figure it out by now. Okay. Well, let's see how fast our new clerk can read the item. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Approved minutes from August 12, 2020 meeting and the bill list of $1,929,073.03. Approved June 2020 preliminary financial statements. Approved contract between contractor and city of Marshalltown for tree cleanup services with Thorpe. Approved tree trimmer licenses for high tech tree service and top notch tree service. Resolution to extend the due date for the facade work at 19 and 21 South 2nd Avenue. Resolution supporting a grant application to rebuild Marshalltown Fund for the construction of a downtown pickleball pocket park. Resolution in support of the Marshalltown Central Business District's Main Street Iowa Challenge Grant application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority for 4 East Main Street, Zamora's Fresh Market. Resolution waiving the applicable, applicable setback requirements under zoning ordinance section 156 of the city code for work relating to the civil emergency August 10th, 2020, the severe weather event. Resolution waiving demolition permit fees relating to the civil emergency from the severe weather event of August 10th, 2020. Resolution to approve the federal recreation trail application of the Iowa River's Edge Trail. Resolution amending the offer to purchase assigned to Marshalltown Lofts LLC to extend the closing and completion dates. That one is pulled for further consideration. And you skipped number 11, Alicia. I think 11 is. I'm sorry, I thought 11 was the one that was removed. Uh, number 11, resolution approving contract change order number 5 for the 2017 manhole and point repair project number 59016002, a decrease of $2,521.60. And going to number 14, resolution amending the banking services agreement with Great Western Bank for a reduction in the interest rate and resolution transferring funds for fiscal year 2020 through June 30th, 2020. Very good. And actually, instead of going to resolutions, we then hit the ones that we skipped. So to test your ability to keep track of your minutes and uh, also get us on track, what is the first resolution we should address? Uh, we will look at item number seven, resolution for incentive facade grant request for Zamora's Fresh Market. We would move for approval, Your Honor. Second. Discussion. Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, the only problem I have with this is the 30-some boarded up windows on the second and third floors that aren't being addressed immediately before we start al allocating money for them to sharpen the, the front of the building first and then the, the plywood patch that exists up on the, the third floor that's been there for years that's holding some of the bricks intact. There's like a four by, four by eight sheet of plywood. I guess I'm, I'm okay with, with them fixing the building. I'm all for it. Um, I'm not okay with the order of how they're, they're tackling this or the timetable that it's going to take to complete all of these things. Um, so I guess all I'm asking is that 
somehow legally we put pressure on them to complete this as fast as possible and uh, take care of the uh, the code violations in the process. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? It looks like Mrs. Steiner is part of that committee, correct? I, was there any discussion about those other issues? I'm super excited they're doing the facade, by the way. Super excited. It's, it's a good thing. And while you're preparing to address that, are the items, the, the windows, um, are those actual code violations or not? I guess they have been, de okay, that, yeah. thank you. Diana Steiner, finance director. Um, so Zamora's, you know, they have to front 75% of the money. So this is the order that they're putting them in. Uh, we did not discuss having them do second or third floor items before the bottom level so I'm not sure you know we could take it back to them and have them um, get some estimates for those if you want to prioritize what you think they should do your honor if I may you may. Diana here's you speaking to you as a member of this committee and not as the, the finance director mm -hmm. may clarify for the public they've already backed out of one grant that they is my understanding they couldn't come up with their share of the money for that my fear is if we approve this tonight they do the front windows and they never do phase two phase three anything they will stop with getting the front of the building on the main street level fixed there's nothing in this agreement that i know of that's going to keep them from just walking away from the rest of it. They haven't proven that they are willing to put the finances forward to complete this project. And I'm and I agree with Bethany and Sue. You know, this is the old Kresge's building. I can't wait to see it get fixed up. I just don't think they're gonna I don't have faith, is what I'm saying. And I don't know how to I don't know how to correct that rather than rather than vote it down and have them come back with timetables and penalties for completing the work. Well we don't we don't reimburse them until the work is done. So all this work has to be done that's listed on the front page of the memo um, before we pay them anything. But there, but there are alternates, though. I mean, right, that is for you know, future projects. It's not projects. saying that right. they have to complete. I mean, right, just the, you know, what they have estimated for $102,000 is what, is what uh, they're estimating the bills to be, and then uh, this committee is saying uh, that $26,000 would go towards, well, 12500 is the maximum. So they're fronting a lot. Um, again, if you, want, if you want the committee to re-meet with Samoras and see if they can put things in different order, but it is the business owner's building and money that they're contributing quite a bit of. So you tell me. <laughs> We can certainly re-meet with them. So, can I? Yes. So, so what I would say is, uh, you are correct, Sue, that the boarded up windows is a property uh, maintenance violation code, and there's probably a few other things on the building that would be um, violations of the property maintenance code. Um, I think what we're seeing with the challenge grant application and with this is that they financially are not able to move forward with doing a million dollar project, which was what the catalyst grant was originally awarded for, and they could not move forward with. And so they're, they're phasing it at this point. And so that's where I would say where we're at. And so if you're not happy with phasing it, we can send them a letter, um, you know, that says they have to comply. But the end result for a property maintenance code violation is to fi file a municipal infraction. And I know that our attorneys in Cedar Rapids would say if they're actually doing work on the building, that you should give them time to do work on the building. And so I think um, this certainly probably isn't the level of work that we all want to see happen at once. Um, but if you're saying we need to, to give, get the timeline from them on when they're going to complete all of those phases, uh, we can certainly do that through a property maintenance code violation letter at this point. Your Honor, I guess I would like to see them show, some, show us some good faith since they've already turned down the one grant and it held up other people 
from getting grants that wanted them at that time. We had to wait till that timed out. I would like to see them show us they're going to do something on their own before we uh, before we award money. I mean, we're not standing in the way of applying for the grant, you know. But I mean, as far as the twenty five percent reimbursement or the the twelve thousand, you know, five hundred. Because this doesn't even account for the other parts of the building that are on the north side. They've got some, uh, I'm sure they've got some violations on the two other sections. Mm -hmm. There's open doors, open windows back yeah. there off that roof. There, I mean, it's, it's, um, there are multiple violations. Exactly. I think there are multiple things as we go through the code that, that would come up as violations. And I guess the bigger issue is we're sending a message to other property owners. It's like, oh, we don't care about your code violations. You know, you can just keep putting those off. But here's some money so you can put a new window in the front. And I, I have a problem with that. So one of the items that you already did approve was a challenge grant for them. And so that would be $75,000 of um, basically match money to $75,000 being spent by, by the owner. And so that is a big portion of money. I know that this is an important step to move this forward. I think that the city's funding was counting part as part of that 75,000. So if you choose not to approve this tonight, the application that's due on Friday is they're going to have to come up with that amount of money to be able to submit that application um, because they'd be short if we don't match part of that 75,000. So that's kind of where this is tonight. Um, and so it's possible if you don't want to approve anything tonight, you certainly don't have to. Um, but uh, like I said, I think having somebody apply for grants and moving forward with a with a project even though it might not be the project we all want to see is still not a bad thing it's progress um then everything's going to be contingent upon an award from a challenge grant and if they don't get that then i think that's going to be a different picture that we'll we'll have to deal with at that time your honor yes sir so let me get this straight what what i'm hearing you say is they need this twelve thousand five hundred just to make their seventy five thousand and we're thinking they're going to do a million dollar project over three phases and they don't they can't come up with the 12,500 right now i i think that they're trying to use everything they can right now in terms of local sources to match what's needed for that challenge grant because it was a qu pretty quick timeline that the challenge grant became available okay. thank you thank you your honor you bet your honor yes one other point of clarification so in the in the memo or the uh 12,500 maximum request in parentheses. So if I look through the other requests that we've done through the same program, there's numbers, plenty of them that exceed that dollar number. Can I ask why that we're limiting a portion of the share or otherwise, even to Gary's point, if the health ex expedite certain other portions of the project? Um, for the facade piece of it, it's um, 8,500 for a one story building and 125 for the more than one story and I just heard that we were discussing code violations so where does that draw the cap at so they, they would have um, twenty thousand dollars up to twenty thousand dollars or twenty percent for code violations but I think what we're allowing them to do right now is define the project rather than us tell them here's your notice here is your project so that's what's happening right now so they would still be eligible for the code compliance dollars when they came forward and were ready to move forward with the windows at that point in time. Oh. Your Honor. Yes. I would, um, I appreciate that they have taken the time to apply for these grants. They are in such a highly visible area of our community that I support the grant. I think that if we can improve what they have now, which is um, the facade is not at all attractive right now. Parts of it are falling down. Um, I think that we need to move even if this is in baby steps. I think we have many other businesses downtown also that if we're getting into code compliance, then we had better go a block to the west and look at the boarded up windows there just across the street there are boarded up windows and we've got to figure out what we're going to do but we have a business owner here that is willing to take the step to say yes we want to improve our facility and our establishment and so i think we should support this um, grant for them thank you thank you other comments by the council Any uh, comments by the public? I believe Julie Winter with Region 6 is on. I didn't know if she. I'll unmute all right now. I'll 
the lines are unmuted, Your Honor. Okay. We're at 10 seconds. Let's go to 20. Yes, Jessica, did I hear you uh, mention my name? This is Julie Winter, Region 6. Hi. Yes, we hear you. Go ahead. Yes, I apologize. I uh, was just able to come in on this meeting. Um, could someone please repeat uh, what I should address? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. That's a... Uh, oh, thank you, Michelle. I was going to say, I'll, I'll step in. I was texting Julie. So <laughs> um, just just real briefly to overlay, and um, Julie with Region 6 has been working with Zamora's on uh, the Main Street Challenge Grant, uh, as well as I believe the submission for the facade and the code upgrade or the facade update um, on this. And as Jessica stated, it is, um, they are de somewhat dependent on each other in order to, to get that. I think that the bigger project that we have seen with Zamora's when we were talking about the catalyst was just that a much larger significant project about upper story redevelopment. Um, I know that the estimated cost for the windows um, that were being discussed earlier uh, was about 200,000. Uh, and so that was a pretty significant component of things where they felt that for the challenge grant to get started, this would allow for that um, with this initial 75,000. Um, Grant, grant funds plus the facade. I think that one of the things that we've been talking about with Region 6 and the city is other possible funding sources that can help with other more extensive facade, so like the windows for not only Zamora's but across the street and some others. Um, and so that is something that we're working on as well that could be maybe a second phase. Um, certainly coming up with that big balance that we saw in the catalyst fund that first time around was very significant for for small business um, they did try to secure some of those funds they really did hope to be able to do that and could not pull all that together um, but they are working in and what they feel like they can do at this time so I think that that's um, this is a step in the right direction they know that there are other things and they want to do those things um, but it is just trying to work on them in stages as they can um, within cash flow and resources that they have available in addition to what grant funding would be available. Yes, Michelle, I think you're spot on with that. Um, I, again, this is Julie Winter. I would just echo that it's very important when you consider the entirety of the scope of the project that we look at this as a phased approach um, and we consider the grant sources as they exist in smaller phases of the work. I, I will fully echo Michelle and say that this is a really great step towards uh, helping to repair this building. We just have to bite it off into chunks right now because there is a lot of work to do and I don't know that we can expect anyone downtown to uh, undergo a million dollar plus project in one fell swoop. Um, so we're, we're breaking it off into small chunks and going after grants as we see fit. So. Thank you for that input. Any other comments or questions up here? I, I suppose just from a standpoint of the big picture, to the extent that they are able to get some grants and uh, make some improvements, if they still are violating the code, nothing keeps the city from enforcing the code down the road. Although I, I know that after one major event, uh, we've been pretty um, willing to work with owners that are trying to get by and stay afloat. Now with the second one and throw the COVID in there to decrease the business between the two events, um, we're probably going to be pretty soft hearted with people and not expect uh, immediate repairs unless there are things that are dangerous that are out there happening, like bro broken windows can, can be that. I would just clarify, Your Honor, that um, we are taking a hard line on anything that was not repaired from the tornado damage, that there was a two-year time period to get that done, and so that uh, that's not considered an extenuating circumstance at this point if they hadn't started work prior to um, the derecho. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, any other comments? Um, uh, yeah, Julie, are you still on? Yes. I would love to make one more comment, if it's appropriate. It is. 
Um, I will also say that for the Canada Challenge Grant, a portion of the scope that we're going after is in relation to having a structural engineer assess the entirety of the south side facade and the west side facade of the building. So I hear there are some discussions about um, safety and dangerous aspects of the building. Those will be addressed with the Challenge Grant scope. Um, so I just want to make sure that that's understood. Thank you. Should we get it funded? Very good. Thank you. I think we did have the clock open long enough to catch any other public comment um, before Julie spoke. So unless there's other comment um, up here, let's go ahead and call the roll. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? No. Okay, that one carried, and then I know, Madam Clerk, you have to catch up with uh, yeses and noes and things like that, but when you're able, would you read the next resolution that was uh, taken off of the consent agenda, please? Item number 13, resolution amending the offer to purchase assigned to Marshalltown Lofts LLC to extend the closing and completion dates. Okay, is there a motion to approve that resolution? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Discussion? Your Honor. Yes, sir. If I may. You may. Uh, I guess I have a question for our city administrator on this. Is this is the second extension we've given them? Is that correct? I, I believe it is the second extension. That's where I believe one of the representatives from the uh, Marshalltown Lofts was to be on the line tonight. And so I don't I, know. I guess I, I'm just asking. I, I would like, to, yeah, I'd like them, if they're on the line, I'd like them to answer the question is, is this the last extension? Are we going to see some some dirt move uh, this year? Those those other structures come down that were damaged in the tornado two years ago that supposedly they had contracts on. I mean, yeah, I don't know if Tony is on the this call. Is, this is Tony. Yeah, this is Tony. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Hi, Tony. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if you're and Council, um, I, I, got a, I got an email from just earlier uh, today or late or yesterday, maybe, uh, I can't remember which one. Um, to answer your question, is this going to be the last extension? Um, we think so. We, we hope so. We don't have any idea not to, not to pass the buck. We don't have any more control over whether or not we need to request an extension on behalf of our tax credit investor. Uh, and or the IRS any more than we have control of COVID. Um, we had delays on this project um, before COVID due to uh, some architectural challenges or reconfiguring of the site. Um, but as you all know, in, in Iowa, you either start the project in the late fall, or in many cases, you wait till the spring um, so that you don't, you know, earn, you know, your, your, your winter allowance. And as soon as the spring came along, you know, we, we had our, our room turned upside down. And so um, that, that, that'd be, the, that'd be the, the answer to the to the first question. Is we don't believe that we're going to need uh, another extension. In fact, every Thursday, I believe at one thirty Central Time, we have a call with, gosh, I believe seven attorneys on the phone every single Thursday. And we don't believe that we're going to close this project and start um, you know, at, at the end of September, first of October, um, but I, I don't want to make any guarantees because I can. I don't know if y'all read in the in the paper today, eighteen thousand dollars per door increase in lumber cost alone. Issues like that, if they come up, we we just simply don't have any control over them. Your Honor, yes, sir. Tony, this is Gary Thompson on the council. Um, do you have ownership of the two dilapidated buildings on the separate properties yet? Um, no, we don't and we can. It's the same situation that we have with your property at the city level. Uh, they are acquired at the closing of the partnership or the funding of the construction loan, um, wh whichever one you'd like to refer to it as. And again, that's scheduled for late September, early October. I might also mention um, although we, we have been told that we, the city did finally receive their letter from the DNR, we cannot uh, begin the project today, yesterday, a year from today, until 
uh, everything will suffice and recorded with the DNR uh, letter as well. All right. Thank you, Tony. Other questions or comments? Well, guys, if, if, um, if, would, you, would you mind if I made two more comments if, if that's not out of line? It's not out of line, Tony. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I've heard I've heard a couple of other rumors that I that I just wanted to address. One is that you know this this housing was intended um, to help out with the tornado relief, and and that and that time has come and gone. I, I I don't believe that it has. At least the market study doesn't state as such. Uh, these projects, even in absence of COVID and in absence of winter conditions, uh, take a take a long time to get going. Um, Sort of to, to couple that statement, I also heard another rumor um, that was essentially, I, I took it as accusatory. Yeah, he put us on the back burner because he was closing other projects. I, I don't know where that came from, um, except to say um, the tax credit investor on this project is a tax credit investor we have not used on any other project before. Um, the only other two projects that I'm involved in were started three years ago, one, and the other one five years ago. So if there was any rumor going around about that, I just I just kind of wanted to take the opportunity to quickly nip it in the bud. Thanks, Tony. Other comments or questions by the council? Uh, since we've never really had any public comment on anything yet in the last uh, couple of months that we've been doing this, I think we can, unless anybody, if any counselor wants to invite co public comment, raise your hand right now. Okay, there we go. <laughs> 20 seconds, okay. If that's not long enough, raise okay, your hand. Fine, just <laughs> give people a chance to speak. Okay, 20, tw muted, 20 seconds it is. And for the record, since nobody else can see in here, there were two hands that went up. So let's go ahead and open it up to the public. That's OK. Ms. Gale, you have to raise your hand even higher because hey. my monitor blocks your view, <laughs> Yes. my view of you. Yeah, that's what it is, the monitor. That's it. Well, I'm short. There you go. I saw that. Now yeah, we're beyond the 20 seconds. OK, thanks. All right, let's call the roll. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Very good. Did that uh, cure all of our um, items removed from there and we're ready for resolutions? Good. Let's go on to item I. May Adam Clerk please read the first item. Tabled item resolution for giving $400,000 loan made to Westtown LLLP for the construction of the Westtown Apartments. Okay. Uh, let's see. Since I was table, I suppose do we call for a motion to we'll approve it? Table, yep. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion to pull that off the table and to uh, approve that resolution? So move, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Second. Mr. Isom, seconds. Any discussion? Um. I, I will have some, some quick discussion on this one as there is a, a letter that is going around that Mr. Clark presented and Mr. Clark is here. Um, so he is actually asking that we uh, not convert this. And so I, do we need some more? Very good. I'll just read it real two, quick. Two more. So um, as, we, as, we, as we look at this, I thought for the clarity of the minutes and the clarity of the items and bringing this to, to arrest, that my recommendation would be that we pull it off the table and that because Mr. Clark does not want to proceed, that you would vote no on, uh, consider the resolution and vote no so that we have a clear record for the minutes moving forward. Um, I can tell you that as you have to go back and look at minutes to figure out what an issue was back in 2002, as much history and trail that you have, uh, the better. Point of order, Your Honor. So, do we need to vote to bring this off the table before we even talk about it? I was just going to ask for that uh, direction. In fact, good point. I, I think we already have had the motion to bring it off the table. Uh, whether that included the resolution to approve it or not was kind of fuzzy. Um, 
Let's uh, let's bring it off the table first. So let's call the roll on whether we should consider it, and then I'll call for a motion to approve the resolution. Asim? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. And now I call for a motion either to um, approve the resolution or to deny the resolution. I guess it would be another way to do it. We don't like to do things in the negative. Okay. Let's not have double negatives operating. I so it, move the Mr. Resolution. Martin moves moves to approve the resolution. Second. Mr. Rice seconds. Now let's um, have discussion. I guess uh, those listening in out in the public don't know what the contents of the. Uh, uh, I don't know if Mr. Clark is here. If you'd like to have him present that. I think that might make sense. Mr. Clark, would you mind uh, telling us about the letter and what you'd recommend? <coughs> I apologize for the time that was spent on this, this, whatever you want to call this. Uh, I did finally got, I get, I finally got to the person that could explain this to me after, you know, it's been a lot of time and <clears throat> Iowa State couldn't do it. Finally got to the right person. When this originally came up, the city made the grant, the consultant goes oh no you've got to go back and have them change that to a loan and I couldn't explain that until now I guess I can explain it the the grant on that project would have reduced the another source of funding by an equal amount and then there would also have been a tax liability because that four hundred thousand dollars would have been taxable income which would have hurt the project that much more so that's kind of the real simple part of it that can that continues to this day and so I'm asking you just to allow that loan to stay on the books for that purpose the West Town Apartments is will remain what it is affordable senior housing for uh, at least 35 more years so this will just stay in place I guess is what I'm asking you to do very good. Any questions or comments for Mr. Clark? Um, Your Honor, I do appreciate the work you've done on the apartments. They are quality to our downtown. And I would support that we not change this, uh, forgive the loan. So I, would be, I will be voting no on this, that we do not change this back to a grant. Thank you. Any other comments? Let's call the roll. Isom? No. Martin? No. Thompson? No. Warren? No. Cahill? No. Gowdy? No. Hoop? No. Thank you. And since I'm blessed with the microphone up here, I can say it was interesting reading to see how that all developed and fun to see what the city council was doing years ago trying to improve downtown housing and, and look what what happened way back when and so how much was on the consent agenda back then <laughs> it was on the consent agenda back then yeah yeah as if we don't stick our decks out every once in a while with that and so about 10 or 15 or 20 years from now some city council and some schmuck who's the mayor will have to address what the heck to do with that okay Could let's go on to the next resolution <laughs> Resolution awarding sale of general obligation corporate purpose and refunding bo refunding bonds series 2020A and authorizing early redemption of outstanding bonds. Your Honor, just to note, we did receive a letter from uh, Vision Marshalltown in support of this. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve it? So moved. Second. Okay. We'll, we'll go Gaudi on the motion. Heisman on the second. Discussion. Diana Steiner, Finance Director. First of all, um, we've been talking about the tax exempt bonds being 11695000 for the last several meetings. Uh, we did have to reduce it down to $9,590,000 uh, per our bond attorney who said that we couldn't make a sale more than $10 million <coughs> a, a day of tax exempt bonds. Um, so therefore, we went back and we looked at the refunding and we picked up the 2012, the higher maturities that were at the end. So then we that was we were able to drop it. So is do you know if Maggie's on the she, line? She's unmuted right now. Okay. 
So I'm going to turn it over um, to Maggie from Spear Financial, this, the city's financial advisor, and she will talk you through our bids today. Hi there, everybody. I'm Maggie Berger with Spear Financial. I'll talk loud so that you can all hear me. We did receive bids for the 2020A General Obligation Corporate Purpose and Refunding Bond. There were six bids received, and we are recommending that you would award to Piper Sandler and Company, which is formerly known as Piper Jaffrey, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, at a very low true interest rate of 0.7949. I did tell Diana on the phone, uh, these are 12-year bonds, and you, I believe, have set the record at Sphere for the lowest interest rate on a 12-year bond. Uh, they were going to pay you, they did pay you um, a premium, so they did pay you about $111,000 in premium. Those dollars not only went towards downsizing the refunding, meaning you did not have to issue as much in refunding bonds, but it also will give you money ahead for your new money project. Uh, Diana was very correct in stating that even though we downsized the bond issue to the 9590000 you still are getting all of the new money dollars that you had anticipated. And the downsizing came in the form of the 2012A, just taking up the last two um, maturities, which had the highest interest rate. Between the 2011B, the series 2014, and a partial refunding of the 2012A bond, the city will realize a gross savings of $197,877, a net present value of about $193,000. Just to be clear, when we were looking at these refundings, we assumed there would be savings right between the three of those right around $100,000. So we're very happy to report today that there was almost an, an additional $100,000 of savings there. We did go through the process uh, with your finance and your administrative team, and we did get a Moody's rating. Uh, you were reaffirmed at the AA2 rating, and it is uh, supported by Healthy Financial, um, uh, Strong Reserve. Uh, they talk about how quickly your debt repays. Uh, they always do bring up that you did have a tornado. Uh, but they are very impressed at how quickly the city's uh, valuations rebounded and how uh, the city handled that. I will tell you we have a call before uh, the August 10th weather event. Uh, Moody did call us to check in on all of you folks. They were very concerned um, from a personal standpoint to make sure that the city was okay. And we assured them that you were handling things um, to the best of your ability. So we're very happy with the scorecard um, that came out and the indicated interest, uh, it indicated Moody's rating of the AA2. I remind you that's just two notches off of perfect. AAA is the perfect. There are eight credits in the state of Iowa that have AAA, and only a handful in the state of Iowa that have a AA1 above you. So we're, again, very happy with that AA2 rating. It's been a rating that you've been able to hold on to and maintain for many years. We have given you uh, the city of Marshalltown on the bid and bidders form, and this really just talks about what the bidders uh, bid. You can see from that um, document that the bid, uh, Piper Sandler bid a 1% interest rate all the way down. We had a couple of other firms bid a 1% all the way down, some bid a 1 to a 1.2, and then we had a couple of outlier firms that bid a 2% all the way down. We do give you the final debt service schedule on that 1%, and you know that the bonds are callable after June 1st of 2027. At that time, you're able to call those bonds in early. Uh, you would be able to just continue to pay on them if you wanted to, um, and uh, or you would be able to just uh, call them in partially at that time as well. Maybe, maybe there was something, uh, you know, you had some money ahead and wanted to pay off the end of those. Just quickly walking through the 2011 B bonds, uh, the total savings on those bonds was $87,391 for a 6.875% savings rate. Significantly higher than what we were anticipating. On the 2012 A, which was a partial refunding, 
Uh, the savings on that one was $89,308. It also produces twelve to $15,000 of interest savings over the next few years. Even though we only refunded the 26 and 27 maturities, by refunding those farthest out maturities, uh, we are able to save some money um, in interest accrual over the next few years, which is very good. That's about a 9.6% saving. And then the very final one was the 2014. It has a very short maturity left, just three years. We did do a little restructuring in that from our original plan to help bring down the debt service levy slightly in 22. And we were still able to get a $21,000 savings or a 2.46% savings. Our threshold is really 2%, so as you can uh, understand, we're very excited about all of the savings here. And I can answer any questions that you have, but we would uh, recommend that you pass the resolution in front of you, awarding to Piper Sandler and Company of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Well, th thank you, uh, Maggie. Personally, having been up here for a number of years, uh, we appreciate the hard work that your company has done and your personal reporting to us after a tornado and uh, pandemic and uh, derecho. Uh, I, for one, am glad to get some good news like this. <laughs> Any questions of Maggie? Should we open this one up for public comment? Raise your hand. Oh, OK. Always. The clock has started now. The lines are unmuted. Time's up. Very good. Let's call the roll on this one. Isom? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? No. Very good. That one carried as well. One able, would you read the next resolution for us, please? Resolution awarding sale of taxable general obligation airport improvement bonds, series 2020B. I move for approval. Second. Discussion? Diana Steiner, Finance Director. Um, this was uh, $2,030,000 for the airport hangar and terminal. And this is a taxable bond. So that's why we had to have two sales. So Maggie, I'll let you go over the results of the bids. Great. Thank you very much. As Diana mentioned, these are taxable bonds. Uh, personally, uh, there is what we consider to be private purpose, which is what bond council helps determine, and that is if they're you know, lease agreements, um, management agreements, things like that. We typically see uh, taxable bonds being issued for things like airports, convention centers, um, possible hospitals or, or clinics, things like that. So today we did receive six bids and we are recommending the low bid of DA Davidson and Company of Denver, Colorado. As we discussed on the phone um, and over the internet today, as we were having a Zoom call to watch these results, the true interest rate came in at a 1.1129%. Uh, we like to see and, and have been seeing interest rate difference between tax exempt bonds and taxable bonds at about 0.4% or 0.5, so about a half of a percentage point. And as you can see from the 0.79 to the 1.11, we're a little under that mark. So we're very happy. Again, I think that is a testament to the strength of the city and your good leading. Uh, we have given you the bids from everyone. Uh, D.A. Davidson's bid ranges from a 1% down to a 1.35. A couple of those ranged all the way up to a 1.75, but those were our, our final bidders or our bidders that are in last position. Um, and we do have the final debt service schedule attached for you. That call feature is also on June 1st of 2027. So again, those are 1% to 1.35% coupons. They will be callable June 1st of 2027. I would answer any questions that you have and we would recommend that you pass the resolution in front of you this evening awarding the taxable bond to DA Davidson and company out of Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Any questions of Maggie? Any further comment? Your Honor. Mr. Martin. 
I'd like to comment uh, for our financial planners, financial planning all together, and Maggie's uh, company for the diligence they've shown time and again. Uh, and it does reflect on the reliability of the city of Marshalltown when we commit to bonding. And uh, I'm overjoyed with this. These interest rates are uh, really low. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Anyone want public comment? Yes. Okay. Start the clock. Tell me when you're good. I'd say 15 seconds is probably enough to get unmuted from the telephone, and so uh, let's call the roll. Isa? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Who? No. All right, that one carried as well. When able, please read, please read the next resolution. Resolution approving the purchase of a 2020 Pierce aerial platform and a 2020 Pierce Pumper and declaring certain property surplus and authorizing sale and disposal thereof of a 1992 Pierce aerial platform and a 2006 Pierce pumper. And I kind of have to read the blueprint to figure out that that's a fire apparatus. Uh, is there a motion to approve that? So moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. Any discussion or comments? Mr. Mayor and Council, it's uh, my pleasure to be with you today. My name is Christopher Cross. I'm the Deputy Fire Chief. I'm happy to be uh, uh, representing the Fire Chief in presenting his resolution for a capital purchase of two pieces of fire equipment. Uh, one is a 110-foot platform that replaces the oldest unit in the, in the fleet. And the, the other purchase for the uh, 2020 Pierce Pumper uh, replaces a 2006 piece of equipment um, that is uh, at or near its uh, usable lifespan. I'd be happy to, uh, to answer any questions um, about capability or serviceability that you may have. Your Honor. Chris, uh, for the public, can you tell us the delivery dates on these? The, I think the, the aerial trucks first, is that right? The delivery? We're, we're actually starting construction of that? I think it's reverse, sir. Oh, I believe it's reverse. The, the okay. pumper would be uh, the quicker piece of equipment to be okay. manufactured. I think 18 months in, is uh, what we're looking at for the uh, for the completion of the aerial platform, and maybe 11 months or 12 months, perhaps, uh, for the uh, the pumper. For the pumper, yes, sir. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Other questions or comments for the chief? Uh, Your Honor, this is a little bit of a sidebar, but with any of the um, fleet damaged in the windstorm i know you had structural damage in the building was any of the yes, fire fleet not to the the suppression pieces were not damaged to the point of being inoperable okay we have some staff vehicles that were um were damaged um and i'm not like our uh, utility truck that helps us haul hose and whatnot the fire marshal's vehicle was was heavily damaged as well and we also had some uh, some uh, body damage to our special operations trailers that were in the path, in the path of the doors um so our adjuster has been out to, to take a look, see, uh, and, and, and adjust all the damage that has uh, come to uh, come to the firehouse, and, and we're awaiting his results back. Thank you very much. As we drove past last night, my passenger asked me, how long will it take to get the doors back? Well, uh, so um, what I've been briefed by the fire chief uh, is that that whole process was going to take approximately two weeks. Um, the door, the, the vendor has been out to assess the building. They've removed all the, the, the broken hardware out of the station. And now I think we're, we're probably into the window, quote unquote, no pun intended, about uh, uh, bringing equipment in and installing. So hopefully within the next week or so, we should have new doors on the, on the, fire, uh, on the fire headquarters. Right. And, and the forecast looks pretty good for that, at least. Except it's getting too dry for the fire department. Let's hope. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We'd always okay. like to uh, not incur a bunch of burning. Yes, Ms. Ms. Martin. Uh, Chris, could you comment for the public and for the council on the retirement of the present vehicles 
put the trade in process is real briefly. Well, I I don't have uh, the actual trade in figures or, or what the asset what they are appraised at as far as their age and hours and, and whatnot. Um, but we look to I, if I could give you a ballpark in in the in the in the sur when we surplus and sell the uh, the older piece of apparatus when they leave the fleet. I would I would hope to get. Um, I'm sure the fire chief. The fi I know the fire chief is online here too. Maybe if we unmute him, he might be able to give you those uh, figures a little bit more uh, accurately than than I. But I hope that we would would at least recoup maybe a hundred thousand dollars for the two pieces together. You just unmuted him. Chief, are you chief there? Chief Ireson. Yes. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Yeah, he uh, Deputy Chief Cross is is pretty accurate on that. Um, the older piece, the aerial platform, um, most likely will be sold as salvage. Um, so basically people are going to buy it in order to have the aerial platform part of it. And we're looking at between fifty and sixty thousand um, dollars for that part of it. Um, the pumper, which is still still usable, um, initially they thought between eighty and one hundred and ten thousand, but that was a year ago. So I, I, would, I would hope that we would be in the sixty to 80,000 range and, and hopefully a little bit more. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, boss. Any other questions or comments up here? I don't anticipate we need to uh, call for public comment on this one. But if I'm wrong, raise your hand. I'm wrong again, <laughs> two of you. Still? Every, Every time. time? Every okay. time. Okay. How about 10 seconds? I'm going for okay. 10. Lines are unmuted. Nine, eight, <laughs> seven, six, five, four. Watch. Somebody will actually call me on the carpet on, on this and s speak up someday. We're done. Thank you for no public comment. Uh, thanks, Chief. Appreciate, Appreciate that. Appreciate your support, everybody. Thank you. You bet. Even with the doors off, it's still fun to drive over to that new building. <laughs> it just is. <laughs> Well, uh, I shouldn't admit it to the public, but that was the only place I could find to charge my phone and, and hide out for about a week. <laughs> and thank you for that. Air conditioning was pretty good, too. Well, let's call the roll. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Warren? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for coming, too. Okay, let's go on to the fifth and last of uh, the items in this category. Our last item is a public hearing for Resolution 2020-236 for the allocation of funds for law enforcement programming or equipment purchase through the Iowa Burn Justice Assistance Grant Program in the amount of $16,027, split 50% with Marshall County. This resolution was approved at our last meeting. Um, however, we were unable to hold the public hearing, so that was rescheduled for today. Thank you. I should probably have this uh, public hearing cheat sheet. It's pink and it's taped right in front of me here, tattooed on my arm, so I don't always have to refer to it. I declare the public hearing is open now and the time is 6.33 p.m. Did the clerk receive any written comments on this topic? No, we did not, Your Honor. Are there any public comments? Let's open the mic for 10 seconds. Ten is up. Time for staff review. Chief. Good evening. Mike Tupper, Marshtown Police Department. So uh, this is an annual grant that we uh, see, and uh, it's uh, uh, awarded based on crime stats. So good news, bad news with this grant. We're getting some money. It's free money. It's less money than we received last year, and that's because our crime stats are lower. So that's the good news, right? So we like to see that. But um, $16,000 and some change awarded in the grant and uh, we have to split that 50 50 with the county so uh, our share will be eight thousand thirteen dollars and fifty cents and uh, we intend to uh, purchase some sound system equipment for our firearms range because it's pretty loud down there and uh, uh, our cops can't always hear the instructions that are being given so we're, we're going to uh, fix that training equipment uh, we need some crime, crime scene photography equipment and uh, we also uh, would like to purchase some night vision thermal imaging um, equipment that we'll also use for crime scenes and missing person searches, stuff like that. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. 
Any questions for the chief? I guess we're at the time for council comments anyway, so any comments or, or other questions? Yeah. Mr. Thompson, yes. Um, chief, I know you were talking about there's a, there's a real time rush on this. Is it, does the county approve, do they have to approve that they're applying for the grant also since it's split with them? Uh, well, are we, the, are we the funding source? We're not the, I wouldn't say we're the funding source, but we're the uh, um, agency that has to uh, go through the application process. So we don't have to wait for the county on we, this? We don't have to wait for the county. Okay. So, and, and we had to submit the grant, but we, we, that deadline had, uh, was last week actually. So because of um, some of the delays with the storms, uh, with the storm, we did submit the grant, but we needed to have this public hearing. So certainly if you want to vote it down and, and uh, you're against it, we can tell them we don't want the money. Hmm. That would set a, an interesting precedent for the city of Marshalltown. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks for the money. Uh, if you promise the crime will go away, we can consider it. Well, that. we're trying. We're trying. We work really hard at that every day. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Okay, let's declare the public hearing is closed at 6.37 p.m. Is there a motion to approve the application for the grant? There's no action. We don't have to take action, do we? Nope. That's we, right. We took action last time. This was just holding the public hearing. We really did get the cart before the horse, but the horse didn't kick us in the um, cart. Okay. <laughs> On to, we don't have any ordinances for discussion, so let's go to the discussion item, which is a request for financial assistance, uh, Fairway Stores. Okay, I just uh, shared my screen, which is an item that I handed out. Um, Fairway is planning to build a new store on their same site. Uh, they are in an urban revitalization area, which is tax exemption, uh, which what's available is 100% for three years on improvements. Uh, with the phasing that they're showing, and uh, uh, Kobe Pritchard with Fairway Stores is on the line here to kind of walk you through that. Um, they will never have a zero dollar building value um, which most because they're going to not um, they're going to be constructing uh, before then tearing down the existing building and so uh, what that means and kind of how it would work in a traditional tax exemption situation is you would normally start with a zero dollar building value and have 100 percent tax exemption for three years on basically zero to whatever that new value is what they're looking at is having to retain that I think it was five hundred and eighty six thousand dollar value of the current building and then um, in the scenario I think I used uh, four million dollars for um, construction costs and so you can see there um, the way I calculated it the difference between having that building as um, existing value versus having zero dollars um, equates about to a sixty five thousand dollar difference over those three years um, fairway has requested some financial assistance and some specific uh, forms and I'll let Kobe uh, walk through those and so that's not ever something we've really had come forward before and so we wanted to bring this forward to you to consider to talk about um, whether or not you're willing to do something and what that might look like. And so, Your Honor, before we start the conversation, I need to let Kobe know that I work for his direct competitor, but I don't think that precludes me from okay. voting or participating in this debate. You don't have any financial interest in it, so um, no, I and think I, you're and right. No, and I shop at his facility, so <laughs> we'll just say that. <laughs> Fortunately, we've only got six people zooming in here, and that doesn't include your boss. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Sure. Hi, Kobe. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you guys hear me okay? You bet. Thank you. Go ahead. Hey, first of all, I appreciate the comments. Uh, Kobe Pritchard, Fairway Stores, uh, 715 8th Street, Boone, Iowa. First off, I appreciate your comments about shopping with us. Um, I know uh, as the discussion item and Jessica did a really nice job of laying things out here. Um, we're kind of hoping this maybe even settles the, the talk a little bit. You know, we know uh, people are kind of asking questions about what's, what's happening and I hope this kind of um, shows a little bit of, of direction on, on what we're doing. We're really excited to kind of bring this project forward finally. We've been working for a while with the city on um, laying out uh, the groundwork to get this thing going. And I think of uh, this phasing exhibit that you guys are looking at kind of shows exactly how unique 
this project is, and Jessica touched on this, we are um, hoping to never have these doors closed. And we worked really hard with our fixture plan and uh, store size and trying to make things work to where we never have to have these doors closed, and I think we're in a pretty good spot. Um, just for, you know, the group's knowledge and, and a little more info on this project, hopefully July of next year this new store is open. So we are technically already um, underway in, in what you're looking at here. So you've got four phases of this project. Phase one uh, being the utility connections, which we uh, have commenced, you know, with starting with some work. That's going to get us um, to the end of next month. We've got phase two where we actually start building the store while our old store is open. Um, and that brings us to 715 where, you know, it's obviously you never know what's going to happen, but that's what we're shooting for for that new store to be open. Phase three, where we're taking down the old store. Phase four, where we repave where the old store sat. Um, we hope to have all that done by October of 21. So we're looking to get pretty aggressive with our timeline here. Um, and we're also hoping with the extra space and the reason why we wanted to utilize the lot that we're on is to hopefully develop something uh, next to us, whether uh, we don't know what that be, but we hope um, given the room and the new building and how much um, of, an, of an updated store this is going to be, um, we hope hope that can kind of draw some, some more attention to the area. And to kind of dive into specifically the, the financial piece of this, again, Jessica did a great job of, of showing um, what discrepancy we are going to see in the um, three-year 100% tax abatement, which we, we really, really appreciate. But we're also knowing with these four phases, this project is, is very much more expensive than our typical typical project or rebuild. So um, we're kind of hoping to make up for that 64000 as an estimate um, in that incentive uh, in, in, in forms of, of public infrastructure is what, what we've called them. And three examples of that and, and ways we've kind of put that to paper is we're obviously going to be adding a sidewalk out in front, um, which we'll be paving. We're also going to be adding new... Uh, entrances into what will be the new, new development. So we're also thinking maybe that would be a good place to recoup these costs. And then lastly, not knowing what the amount would be, there's always the option to waive permit fees, which we found to be beneficial in the past, and also maybe just a way to recoup some of the costs on already uh, an expensive project. So kind of a long way of saying uh, this is a project we're really, really excited about. This, this phasing exhibit that you're looking at is going to be in our store starting on Wednesday. So customers that are coming in on obviously a very busy time are going to be able to know and see the dates as things are getting checked off and why things are happening around the store. So as more of an introduction, that's, that's kind of um, what I want to let you guys know, and then obviously I'll answer any questions on the financial piece uh, that you guys have. So th thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, thank you for the tour of the store over names to this uh, a few months. Actually, it was last winter by now, wasn't it? I think yeah, that, I yeah think you got it. And that's uh, the best example I can choose of. of um, that's the store that's going to be in Marshtown tweaked a little bit. So, I mean, it's uh, quite the facelift, and, and we're really excited to, to bring kind of that second look as the second store in Marshalltown. So, yep, you're right. It was uh, really attractive and busy as could be the day that um, I, I parked there and you gave me the tour. Uh, and I do anticipate that, like they're experiencing with, they're experiencing in Ames, there is interest right around there when there's a new development like that. It's my understanding too. This is the highest traffic count intersection in the city of Marshalltown. It's it's pretty high traffic around there, so that will be good for drawing people in. Any questions? Well, I've got Kobe on the line though. Your Honor. Yep, as, as we progress with discussions and so on, I'd like to have some figures, I think, on what is expected or is wished for uh, in terms of sidewalk and entrance and so on. The, the waiver of fees is, is within our power easily, but I don't see any finite uh, estimates uh, for those things. Could you comment? Yeah, great point, and one, one I know probably was going to be brought up. Uh, when this was first talked about and kind of trying to brainstorm on how we could recoup this this amount, um, we, we are able to put estimates to it, but we really aren't going to know officially until those those bids are put out. Um, I, if I had to guess, and this was just coming from our engineering team, when we are submitting uh, things to the city and kind of checking the boxes off as we go, 
We think the reconstruction of the sidewalk probably is going to be between 15 and 20 and the uh, thousand, and the reconstruction of the access approaches, depending on how deep they go, we also see that at about 20,000. And then pending the permit fees, um, um, that's that's kind of the to in, in totality of what we're looking at. And honestly, we'd love to get up to 63,000 just to make make it whole, but we would have to find something else that is identified as public in infrastructure. And I've seen open suggestions, but um, that's kind of what we're thinking. Those are estimates, but obviously we'll know more, especially when this work starts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there questions or comments for Kobe? Your Honor. Uh, Kobe, this is Gary Thompson. Um, is what you're proposing to us, is that similar to what the city of Ames did for you with the downtown store? Because it would have been the same situation. You had an existing store while you were building the new one, right? It, it was very similar. The, I would say the Ames was, was different just because there were a lot of um, very different requirements for the area that the store sat. We were, we were very fortunate for having the, stair, the store there for so long and then rebuilding, but we still had to um, upgrade certain things like uh, detention underneath the concrete, which, which was unexpected. There was um, some fairly strict uh, landscaping requirements and 100% full disclosure. The, the city banks did not um, offer anything, but we also did, did not ask. So uh, we kind of learned from, from our mistakes there a little bit. That's why it's being brought up now. All right. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you, Your Honor. Yep. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions? I suppose uh, keeping in practice, let's open it up to the public, although I think we're down to one person I, don't, I can't identify as being related to the city who's online. That's 15 seconds. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thanks for that uh, presentation. We will give that some consideration here. And we're excited about having a, a new nice looking store in our uh, um, stock of stores in town. Well, that's, that's where I think we're looking for some direction. And so do you want to put this back on as a discussion item for the next agenda? Or is there any direction you would like to provide tonight? Does anybody want to move to approve that we direct staff to uh, come up with our own estimates on what those three things might uh, be expected to cost? Um, I have one question, Your Honor, and I am, you might have to refresh my memory here. When Thompson's True Value built their store, we provided some funding for new construction um, to them from the council. How would, is there a way to um, utilize the same type of funding for the Fairway store? Yes, and, and that was actually going to be something I was going to bring up to you as an option. So when you created the new construction incentive, um, its boundaries were set with the downtown urban renewal area. This is out of it. And so Thompson's True Value was eligible. You made them eligible for it um, by approving a resolution that said so. Um, and so you could e very easily do the same thing here of awarding um, a $50,000 new construction grant um, and just state in your resolution that uh, you're, you're going outside of the, the physical boundary that was set previously. So you, because it's local option sales tax, and I should mention we had awarded 200 of 250,000, so there would still be 50,000 that would be remaining there for, for um, that had not been awarded, which you had previously designated. So that is certainly one way to do it, and it's because it's local option sales tax and it's council designated, you guys have the ability to say exactly what you would like to do. So the direction that you're asking, or what we may be asking, is that you come up and present to us options of how we could um, help reduce that 64 plus change thousand dollars yeah um, that's certainly something um, I think as the mayor mentioned if it's if it's us putting you know our engineering team on looking at what um, sidewalk and approaches would would generally cost and coming up with uh, what we can estimate the building permit at at this point in time we can certainly look at what those numbers are um, and so yeah it's 
Uh, I, I would say these requests are a little bit hard because we know that there are some other projects that will probably be coming along in the near future where it's a reconstruction with probably a, a larger building permit fee and new sidewalk requirements as well. And so, um, but if, they're, if, if you're open to considering just a cash grant from local option sales tax, that's also out there as a possibility. So yeah, we'd have no problem bringing this back to the September 14th meeting um, with hopefully a little, with a little bit more information from Kobe and Fairway to be able to put better numbers to some of those items. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, Your Honor, mm -hmm. and Jessica, is there an alley there or do they own the property all the way up behind the strip mall and behind Taco John's? Um, there is not an alley and I, I don't know if Kobe even wants to mention this that that's been kind of that's a, been a, uh, an, a drive on to their property which will no longer exist with that's the, what the I new see store here. sitting there. That's what so. I see here that yeah. it's going to shut off so. that driveway of people cutting through there. Correct. So, but there is no city land involved, no alley involved. That was previously their land and it will continue to be their land. And so they're planning on fencing that so people don't try to drive through there, right? I think you'll hit a building if you try to drive <laughs> through there. Well, there looks like there's a little room. So. <laughs> but that looks like a semi-dock on that uh, east side. I, I think the way that it will be um, constructed and what has Landscape been related is that it will be very apparent you cannot drive okay. through there. Some of those Taco John's customers will regret that. So, I, I guess where are you? Are you, I'm, uh, this? Are you coming? I'm back? suggesting some, somebody move to give the staff direction. If, if you don't want to move on that and you just want us to bring it back, then we can have it on the September 14th agenda, um, since there's nothing that we're really deciding on tonight. So. That's what I would like. Me too. Uh, that works. Is Kobe racing a time clock on this? Does he need this? From the, uh, from the uh, sounds of it. Uh, no, we, we, are, we are not. I mean, we, we wanted to bring this up at an appropriate time and at least let the city know, you know, we are committed to this project regardless. Um, it's kind of a good safe effort, and um, we also just wanted to demonstrate the uniqueness and some of the obstacles that we did face. And one, sorry if this is out of line, please stop me, but two things I forgot to mention. Um, we had to purchase part of the two ho houses behind our existing store to be able to create our boundaries big enough to even build this store. And then another thing is obviously once we get our store up and running, we start that phase three of demo, um, we have a, a fairly new large expense, obviously of demoing everything included on the parking lot and that being the overhang too. So I know some are gonna miss that, but it's also an expense that we didn't see um, being as, as big as it is. So that's kind of the reason why we're bringing it up now so we can have a, a, a full idea of what we're doing differently. Thank you. Oh, you're on, Kobe. One last question. Will this this store will look like your your the footprint you're doing now? The it look like the AIM stores, right? You will walk into the store and you you won't be able to tell the difference between AIMS and this one. Okay. The fixture plan stretched a, a little bit differently to make these parameters work. That's also um, something we don't normally be able to really want this to work the right way. So we did change some stuff internally, but you, you won't know a difference. Thank you. Well, I think staff has its direction, and uh, I doubt we need any. We, we've already done the public uh, invitation to speak, haven't we? Yeah. Okay. Well, at that point, I would entertain a motion to go into closed mm -hmm. session. Public, public comment. comment. Oh, that's right. We do have public comment. I have to cycle back through to get to my uh, caveat. I have to read again here, too. Okay. At this point, the members of the public may take, may make comments on any item not on the agenda. Approach the mic or telephone and state your name and address. Limit your comments to three minutes unless authorized uh, longer by me. Director Gomez to the Mayor and Council as a whole. We are not supposed to engage in discussion or debate on items raised by members of the public and no action may be taken on them in order to comply with the open meetings laws. With that said, are, is there any public comment? That would be me. I'm glad to say I don't need a step stool. Um, my name's Kendall Derby. I live at 28 North 3rd Street here in town. And before I start, I do want to 
echo what Sue said earlier. Um, I got tornadoed two years ago. The city crew response, I, I was astounded to see stuff disappearing off curbs so quickly. Um, with that in mind, uh, what I want to speak about is the response to the current wind event. Um, seems like Marshalltown should have been really leading the way with that because we've unfortunately had practice. Um, and I realize that some responses are coordinated or with uh, county management. Um, but I think a sound emergency response um, has a lot of redundancy built in and uh, information ahead of time so that everybody knows. Um, I, I didn't see a lot of that. Um, I thought I saw that damage assessment took a uh, priority over securing people. Um, there wasn't good communication. Everything was over Facebook or other internet sites with people having no charging, no power, no internet connections. Um, when you did get on there, things were pinned. You had hinky data connections and you were scrolling down trying to find uh, current information. We didn't have shelters. We didn't have charging stations because places were without power that we normally use uh, because of COVID. COVID's been here five months. I think the plan would be updated to include that at this point. Um, usually there's redundancy in a good emergency plan so that if this place doesn't have power, we have some alternates. I would uh, like to see a work session or this, the, the plan brought to the, onto the agenda so that there could be some discussion and input on maybe getting that updated very quickly before we maybe have winter where the whole town's without power and what happens if we don't have shelters then? You can't go outside and cool off, your people are gonna freeze. Um, it just seems like speaking to people like, maybe we need to look at this quickly and do some updates. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Thanks. While we're waiting for Wordsworth, uh, we did have some uh, emergency meetings continually trying to figure out how to handle things, including getting a generator to the hospital and finding a, a cooling center, starting with the college as one option and uh, looking at the Y and ending up at uh, Salvation Army. And it's my understanding that only one person, we did get those in place, only one person arrived uh, during that time that the cooling stations were available and that person was not there in order to get air conditioning. So I, I was surprised about the lack of response to that, but also know that we had significant trouble getting the word out at the uh, interview I had over the noon hour today with the radio station. Uh, we discussed how difficult it is to get the word out. Even if the radio stations are up and operating, it takes people having electricity or batteries or wind up uh, radios to be able to hear it and know where to listen. Um, the uh, cell coverage was uh, minimal. AT&T set a new cell up in one of the parking lots downtown to try to help people. The library that's a place where people often go for the Wi-Fi didn't have any uh, generator or any power to get the word out. Um, when the whole town gets hit like that and everybody is without electricity, it really put a, uh, a lot of weight on the shoulders of uh, the people to respond. Can I comment back to that? Uh, you can have rebuttal. Sure, come on. It's actually not allowed in our... That's oh, a rebuttal isn't allowed? No? Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. You. That's fine. Well, and we all accept emails and, and that sort of thing. Um, Chief. If I may, Mike Tupper, Marshall Police Department. I'd like to add something to that. Um, I understand the concerns. I have those concerns. But we use the newspaper. We use radio. We use television. We use social media. We use our websites. Short of carrier pigeon, I'm not sure what else we can do to push out information. So um, 
this was a unique event. And then with COVID-19 on top of it, social service agencies aren't responding. This is a disaster that the Red Cross is not responding to because of COVID-19. We have no control over that. So uh, we, we worked very hard to set up shelters and to make sure people were getting fed and to make sure that people were getting the information that they need. And every time we have an emergency, and this isn't just our community, it, this is a, a problem across the country. Every time there's an emergency, one of the complaints is you're not doing enough to communicate with us. But we're using so many different avenues to communicate. I, I really don't know what else we can do. And I understand that people don't have power, but what, how else, outside of me standing in the town square and shouting information, I'm, I'm not really sure what else to do at this point. So I'm open to ideas. Um, again, a unique event uh, complicated by COVID-19. And when our normal social service partners are unable to respond, that, that you know, it makes it difficult. And uh, local government can only do so much. So. Uh, I felt like the, the uh, and I'm biased, by the way, but I felt like our first responders and our local government did a phenomenal job responding quickly to a very um, chaotic and catastrophic event. So uh, if anybody has a better idea about how to push out information, I'm all about information. I, I think I've proven that over nine years. So let's, uh, let's try to, to find those solutions. But. Um, we used everything that was available to us. So. Senator Grassley was here last week and told me that he had called the president of the Red Cross to ask, hey, what what are we going to do if you're not able to respond because of COVID-19? And as I understand it, they actually did send teams over to Cedar Rapids that got hit even worse than we did. But yeah, it was interesting this time. So um, I, do, I, I do need to shout out Salvation Army was the one local partner that did, was able to step up and did step up big time. And we really appreciate everything that they did to help us. Absolutely. And, uh, they worked very hard to overcome some challenges of their own, so. Uh, Alliant provided a uh, compressor generator for them. It didn't, didn't match, didn't fit right away. Our city staff had the ability to help them get going so that they actually had electricity. And they've been providing a lot of food for people that needed it. But I think both of us are violating my instructions to, to not respond to this sort of thing. So at the, uh, at the risk of uh, um, continuing the discussion, let me ask if anybody else from the public who hasn't spoken yet would like to speak. And let's go the 15 second clock on this one again. Okay, very good. Well, I jumped a gun to try to get to the closed session earlier. Let's see if we can do that at this point. Is there a motion to um, go into closed session under section 20.5? I, I move that we go to closed session. Section 21.5, subsection 1, paragraph J. Thank you. Was that a second? Second. Sorry. Taking your Roll call. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Very good. Okay, we will go into closed session. I guess for the record, it's uh, also usually noted that we have a working relationship, attorney client with Attorney Shell and with Lynch Dallas uh, by council resolutions. And so they will remain and give us advice and counsel after the room has emptied of uh, people who are not counselors or the mayor or city staff. And this one involves the uh, uh, price that may be involved with uh, property that may be acquired. <laughs> 